Welcome back everyone! I took some weeks off mostly to prepare new walkthroughs and other material for you guys, but I'm back on track with the uploads and I will be publishing again every Thursday. I will go all the way until the end of the year without missing any week and if I get to do more content I will upload more often. This time it will be slightly different, as I will be mixing contents. I will be doing some walkthroughs, tutorials, specific building concepts, videos about full cities. So you will have to tell me what content is more interesting for you. This first stop of the walkthrough series, season 2 if you're willing to call it like that, is the Berlin Unité d'Habitation by Le Corbusier. So, in the beginning of the 20th century, the industrialization brought a lot of changes to the way people lived and how the cities were shaped. There was a huge exodus of population from rural spaces to the city, and this grew massively in a short period of time. UK was one of the countries that went through the biggest changes. Between 1800 and 1900, the population in UK cities multiplied by 7 in average in all the big cities. This means a city that had 100k inhabitants in 1800 would grow up to 700k in 100 years. That's unsustainable. To give you a more recent reference, between 1900 and 2000, those same cities grew in the worst case 40%, while others decreased up to 35%, with all of them peaking in population around 1950. This massive growth brought overcrowding to the cities, really low living conditions and substandard housing, also due to the lack of infrastructures. This overcrowded city type with horrible living conditions started in the middle of the 18th century and lasted until the end of the Second World War. But Le Corbusier already presented a new plan for the cities radically different to what was being built at the moment in the 20s. This concept brought big residential blocks surrounded by vast green spaces. And although he tried to build this city idea for decades, it never got fully applied or succeeded. The Unité concept was another proposal along these lines. Five units were built around the world. The first one and most famous is the one in Marseille, which packs the most concepts of all of them. The idea was to reshape the modern cities and get all the lost qualities of traditional housing, views, big green spaces and optimal sanitary conditions for all the inhabitants. Instead of that fast-paced growth of the city that doesn't answer to any living needs other than being a box to sleep with very poor conditions, he proposes to condense the program of an area vertically and to build these large units as independent small autonomous neighborhoods. And as a neighborhood, pack all necessary equipments such as shops, sports areas, recreational areas and spaces in the building and leave big green spaces, sun and views around the building. This neighborhood concept was never sustained a long time. And although some unites, like the one in Marseille, packed a lot of this program, never lived up to his expectations. In principle, all unites follow the same recipe but with small adjustments due to regulations and project constraints. I will focus on the first one, Marseille, and then compare it to the one built in Berlin because it is important to have an ideal case to compare. This building concept is a news and application of all the studies and characteristics of his works. Number one, the use of an exposed concrete for the main structure of the building that we already saw in the Ronchamp chapel, for example, is very present in many of his other buildings. We reviewed Le Corbusier modular system in the video of the Swiss pavilion, but basically he developed an anthropomorphic system of proportions and dimensions for all his buildings. This applied in his late projects and Marseille is one of them.
he creates several different type of apartments in the same building, from studios for single people to double-story residences that span across the building. All of them use the same configuration, three floors, one interior hallway. This is very efficient because two hallways fit six actual floors, so the necessary space to access the apartments is really reduced. He also has two different balcony heights for each apartment. In floors 7 and 8 he creates a public space, a space where neighbors can spend time together among other equipments in what he called internal street. Also in these levels he creates a brisolale to control sunlight intensity. All apartments have a terrace and every terrace has a different color. The rooftop contains the vast majority of the public equipment of the building a garden and a terrace, as well as an open and closed gymnastic space, a solarium, a sprinter's truck and a snack bar. And this mix of uses is one of the concepts that survived a long time and is very alive in present architecture still. It is a very big amount of concepts that work together to reshape the living spaces. Le Corbusier's proposal for Berlin includes 530 apartments distributed in 17 levels, accessed only through nine streets, which are really wide, where residents could enjoy social interaction. In the Berlin Unité, we can see three different apartment types in the section, some of them single height, also double height, and at last the same apartment type we saw in the Marseille Unité that spans across. All of them have different variations in width to accommodate from singles to different family types. Each house has also separate balconies forming a grid that can be seen from the exterior. This allows the light to enter but protects the inside from excessive solar radiation. Unlike other unites like Mazé, Berlin has little additional facilities. At the beginning, a children's nursery, a post office, a small supermarket and a bank were included, but they do not work anymore. Right now, only a small shop in the ground floor is existing. So in principle, the Unité is working as a residential building. In the Berlin case, the rooftop allocates the building facilities. So it doesn't have any social or common use for the building. Another affected element of his approach was the modulor he used in Marseille. When built, the German building code was relatively strict with the proportion and spatial dimensions requirements. The heights had to be expanded to 2 meters 50 instead of the 2 meters 26 he originally planned. The end result didn't please Le Corbusier, and so his breeze soleil and study is affected. Although a long time regulations regarding space and heights have been even more strict and higher heights have been used. If you frame these buildings in the time they were created along with the concepts Le Corbusier was proposing as a whole package of rules and equipment, you can acknowledge the value that he brought to architecture. And although these built proposals never lived up to the initial theoretical concepts, it supposed an incredible jump forward in architecture. And you can see how he influenced many architects that came after him. And this is all for the day, people. I hope you enjoyed the comeback. I will be posting much more along the year. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next one.